Today we welcome Victor Ferrero onto the blog. Uh, so welcome, Victor. Um, Victor has recently been promoted to Associate Director of Global Product Strategy uh, Gene Therapy at Biomarin, uh, having progressed through sales, multi-channel strategy and marketing roles at Merck and Takeda. Uh, so Victor has a business educational background and he's also completed his master's in health economics and market access. Um, and Victor is joining us today to discuss personal effectiveness. So it is important to note as well at this point that the views and opinions expressed here are those of Victor and do not represent the views or the position of Biomarin. Um, so welcome, Victor. Great to chat to you today. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself to start off with? Absolutely. Thanks so much, first of all, Laura, for the invitation. Happy to participate in, in your blog. And uh, yeah, delighted to, to chat in with you. Um, about myself, very briefly, uh, I was born and raised in Spain, uh, but we've been living in Dublin, my wife, my son and myself, uh, for the last uh, three and a half years, almost, in this beautiful city. And as you said, I work for Biomarine. I belong to the commercial team. And uh, my duty is to launch a very unique product, a gene therapy for patients with a very rare bleeding disorder. So there we go. Uh, apart from that, I'd say that I'm passionate about what I do. Uh, I have a very genuine interest in science, in people. And I have to admit that uh, beyond rare diseases, uh, I really love uh, the oncology space. So that's that's also one of my, my passions. Great, thank you. And so why is personal effectiveness something that is of particular interest to you? I mean, personal effectiveness um, is super important for me because life is too short, I'd say, uh, and time is very limited. Um, so making a very good use of time uh, makes a, a huge difference, in my opinion. Uh, apart from that, um, and also looking back, I have realized that uh, colleagues and uh, leaders in, in the pharmaceutical sector that I admire are very good at managing timings and, you know, they are very, very effective. Regardless, regardless the leadership style, I have realized that all of them, I think, are super effective when managing timings and then when managing time in general. And uh, I try to emulate them. You know, we, we all have role models. And uh, I think that my roles, mo my role models are a little bit like that, super effective from a professional and uh, from a personal perspective. Yeah, of course. And so how do you prioritize your time and manage your workload? Well, that, that's two questions, right? <laughs> uh, the way I prioritize my uh, my you know day, my week, my month, even my year, um, you know that deals with a, a very clear planning. Um, you know, I'm I'm an early bird, so that helps me going through the day in advance, going through the week in advance, going through the month in advance. Not every day, but quite often. So that's the first thing I do, I try to focus on the planning in the mornings. And this way, I try to be proactive. So, so that I can, you know, handle and I can make decisions along the day, along the week, again, along the month, and then along the year. Um, and then something that I do is to have um, a very detailed uh, and a very careful management of, of my agenda, meaning that sometimes I skip meetings and, and, and that's fine. Uh, and sometimes I book time for myself, for the most relevant tasks. And, you know, not only completing all the lists, all the, all the to-dos in the, in the list, but also prioritizing them and making sure that, you know, the big ticket items, are complete when they have to be completed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would you say then are your biggest challenges affecting your own personal effectiveness? Yeah, 
I mean, there are always challenges. Uh, and uh, even though I try to emulate people that manage this, uh, this aspect uh, successfully, I sometimes got caught by the whirlwind, I say. Sometimes, you know, this tornado of urgency uh, is difficult to manage. And, uh, and sometimes I'm not consistent enough to, you know, as I said before, really own my, my own agenda and, and to really prioritize uh, prop, uh, appropriately. Um, but, you know, also, also looking back when, when I was working uh, for other companies, not, not for Biomarine, I remember that the old Victor was, was not uh, as good as, as the one now, even though I have a lot of room for improvement. Uh, you know, the way I manage my inbox now is super different, it's more effective. Uh, the way I understand, um, you know, uh, the preparation of the meetings is, is also super different. And um, I think that kind of naturally, uh, everyone can understand, you know, the uh, improvements that needs to be done to be more effective at work and why not also in life in general. Yeah, no, definitely about reflecting and seeing how you can be better each day. Um, and I think it's safe to say as well that we have all seen an increase in virtual meetings. Um, but how do you, how can we ensure that we remain present in a post-COVID world? I mean, being present is definitely challenging, uh, especially as you said, in, in a very virtual world in which, you know, a lot of people work from home and we are continuously connected via Zoom, uh, via Teams, whatever the platform is. So I would call out the fear of missing out. I think that organizations, leaders, and, uh, you know, professionals in general have to be very aware of the fact that life goes on. If you miss a meeting or two, that is gonna be fine. Of course, there are meetings that cannot be missed, but I think that the FOMO is not as, as present as, as it should be, which impacts the lack of presence, like actual real presence in, in the meetings. Um, and on top of the FOMO, um, probably there is a, 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 an ep epidemic or, or a pandemic as well of, of meetings. And in terms, in, instead of focusing on quality meetings, we have too many meetings and, and we want a lot of updates and we want to catch up continuously. However, if we sometimes step back, plan less meetings with more quality, with good agendas, with nice and, and uh, you know, more precise allocation of timings, that would help. Uh, so probably we have to stop a little bit and, uh, and build on that. I remember uh, my colleague, uh, Birche Didar, she posted something on, on LinkedIn only a few days ago about slow productivity, slow productivity. And I was like, oh, this, is, this sound, sounds interesting. And it seems that research has shown that uh, when professionals focus on quality and they kind of work less, work slowly, mm -hmm. it has a positive impact in the outcomes of whatever is done, you know, whatever the project is. Uh, so so that's, that's kind of an interesting uh, concept that I will try to, to, keep, in my, uh, to keep in mind from, from now on. Yeah, for sure. That sounds interesting. So then speaking of your personal effectiveness, what habits can we adopt to influence others to improve their own personal effectiveness? Well, that's that's a tough one, right? Um, that, that reminds me um, a book that I read a number of years ago from uh, Stephen Covey. And uh, he was talking and explaining the habits of highly effective people. And uh, I, I don't remember all of them, by the way, but some of them were first uh, be proactive, 
So try not to be reactive all the time because that way you will not be leading and you will not be, you know, managing your uh, projects, your duties, your tasks appropriately. You will be only reacting, so be proactive. Then act with the end in mind, trying to envision, you know, the, the success, try to look into the future and, and the outcomes you want to achieve. Um, synergies, synergies and, and a win-win mindset are super crucial to whatever you need to do, whatever the task is, whatever the mandate is, think win-win and, and synergize. And then he used an expression like that, that said, sharpen the saw, you know? So he wanted the readers to understand that we should listen more, talk less, analyze more, act less, and make sure that you know, we fine tune our plan before putting things in, in motion. So I think that's, you know, that's one of the um, books that, that I could recommend people that want to be more effective or, or even, you know, my, my peers, you know, uh, yeah. from the copy. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that adapts to different personality types as well. Um, but I like the the definitely managing your projects uh, before they manage you. <laughs> um, so is effectiveness important to you in your personal life? It definitely is. Uh, I think I think that even if people don't consider effectiveness as something important in their lives, it is, you know, because again, life is super short. Um, and uh, especially nowadays, you know, uh, it's all about the balance and uh, we want to enjoy mental health, physical health, time with our beloved ones, of course, develop ourselves in, in, in our uh, jobs, in our companies, in our sector. So we, we live the same life, both at work and at home. And uh, yeah, it is, you know, um, trying to get good uh, hours of sleep and rest, trying to find time for myself to practice sport, uh, trying to spend time with uh, with my family and with my friends is even more important than than work, you know. So it's a yes, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely the same as well. Uh, very organised. <laughs> um, okay, great. Well, it's been really great to chat to you today. I know that a lot of people will probably struggle with personal effectiveness. Um, so hopefully they've gotten some advice from this. Um, but if anybody has any questions, uh, I will include my email address at the end of the blog. Uh, so please feel free to reach out. But thanks again for featuring, Victor. Thank you so much, Laura. Have a good day.